Hey everyone, the sound booth I usually use uh, is out of commission this week, so I'm using a different microphone setup. So, uh, in case you're wondering why the audio sounds different this week, oh, there you go. I like to bring it on. I even like the direct video sequels. Well, except for the one with Beyonce's googly-eyed sister, not even Hayden Panettiere could save that one. Recently, there's been an overwhelming amount of cheerleader slasher movies, so many in fact that I think they might be kickstarting their own subgenre. There's even two ninja cheerleader movies. Back in the 1980s, cheerleader movies were usually teen sex comedies. That was until 1988 when director John Quinn mixed the slasher genre with the teen sex comedy genre to bring us Cheerleader Camp. The movie starred a very attractive Betsy Russell. At the time, she was mostly known as the girl who went bareback riding in private school. She wanted to be taken as a serious actress, so when she accepted the role for Cheerleader Camp, she refused to do nudity. Director John Quinn compensated for this by casting Playboy Playmates Terry Weigel and Rebecca Ferrati, as well as penthouse pet Krista Flancer. Much to the rejoicing of men everywhere, these girls were more than willing to take their gear off. The big star of the film was former teen idol Leif Garrett, although his career was on the downslide at the time. As an inside joke, the prompt masters put two of Leif Garrett's albums out for display. The movie starts off with cheerleader Allison having a nightmare. She wakes up in a van on the way to Camp Hurrah Cheerleader Camp. My god, these are the oldest teenagers ever. How many teens do you know that have widow's peaks? As they pull up to the camp, Timmy decides to moon the crowd and shows them the biggest ass ever. <laughs> Miss Tipton is the person in charge of the camp. She takes roll call. There's the cheerleaders, Bonnie, Pamela, Teresa, and Allison. There's the male cheerleaders, Brent and Timmy, and the mascot, Corey. They make a really big deal about how the mascots are all treated like garbage. Allison is dating Brent, who wastes no time trying to cheat on her. What would make him want to do that? Somebody? I need love. Corey and Allison are roommates. Allison has a nervous disorder and is always taking pills to calm her down. Boy, a pill-popping, needy, nervous wreck. Who she thinks she is? Brent tries to tell Timmy that the reason he isn't a hit with the ladies is... You know, Timmy, you just gotta learn to express yourself a little more. You're just too shy. Oh, obviously that's it. Not that he's 400 pounds, or a peeping Tom, or a cross-dresser. No, he's too shy. The girls take some time to relax and do some sunbathing. Either that or model for a swimsuit catalog. Do you guys really think she's that hot? Yes. Sheriff Poacher is spying on the girls. Is everyone a voyeur in this movie? Anyway, he gets caught by Pop, the local caretaker. Holy crap, Pop's the goddamn Batman. Well, who the hell let you out of your cage, anyway? Allison goes to confront Susie because she thinks she's cheating with Brent. When she goes into her cabin, she finds that Susie killed herself. Miss Tipton has a meeting to tell everyone that the top cheerleader killed herself. Allison goes to the bathroom to clean the raspberry jam off of her face. She then confides in Corey about her nightmares. Now this next scene is horrifying. Nothing I say can properly prepare you for it. In all of horror, this could be the most terrifying scene ever. Here it is, uncut, in its entirety. I apologize in advance. Start with Allison. She's so fine. But look at her long, or you'll go blind. Next is Pam, she comes out with a fam. And we'll tell you this, she ain't no sham. Next is Ronnie, she acts kinda funny. Steal your heart, but not your money. Don't can't forget Teresa, she's got what it takes. Putting her on this team was no mistake. Last is Glory, this is her story. She's our gator, you'll be seeing her. And we're Brett and Timmy, we're part of the bunch Gonna take the crown and that ain't no hunch Now get ready to hear our cheer Cause we're the best team you see this year <laughs> Allison finds the body of Susie in the freezer Turns out Miss Tipton didn't want to tell the police Because she was afraid they would shut the camp down You think that if she didn't want anyone to find the body She would have at least locked the freezer Miss Tipton and the sheriff go back to her office. Ugh, this is almost as bad as the wrapping sequence. Originally, the character for Miss Tipton was written as a very large, matronly woman. When Prettyman came on board to play the sheriff, 
he discovered that he was going to have to have a sex scene with her. Since he was the film's producer, he insisted that they change the character to somebody more attractive. God, their choreography sucks. I think the girls should have had this guy choreograph for them. Up, punch, across. Crank, crank, stay down. Shoulder, chin, shoulder, and tap. Double dream hands, and... Brent's putting the moves on Pamela right in front of Allison. Hey, why don't we go someplace we can get some sun, huh? Okay. Brent and Pamela start to mess around when... Shh. I hear something. What now? Shh. Really? I've had about enough of this bullshit. Brett! Man, this guy's impatient. Pamela goes after him, but gets a pair of hedge clippers to the head. Allison has a dream that she killed Pamela. She's awakened by Corey, but why the hell would you wake somebody up like that? Corey stops her from using her pills. The group gets ready for competition night and are upset that Pam disappeared. You know, I think we'd all be better off if she think more about the team and less about getting honey on her muffin. That's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. The group competes, but they try to improvise since they're missing a teammate. Oops, wrong movie. Wow, look at that neck beard. Their group loses, but somehow Bonnie wins Miss Cheerleader USA. Teresa goes to look for Pam. She finds Pam's body and then gets crushed against a tree. Wait a minute, this van has blood on it before it even hits her. Back at the after party, Timmy's talking to this girl, and holy shit, he's gonna eat her! Ah, it turns out she actually wants to have sex with him. Ah, good for Timmy. They go outside to mess around, but unfortunately Timmy finds out the hard way that she's on her period. Timmy, that's not funny. That's disgusting! Timmy tells the gang that he found Teresa's body, and he takes him there to show her where she is. Allison finds Miss Tipton with a meat cleaver in her back. Brent tells everyone at the party that there's a killer, and they all panic. Pop thinks that one of the kids is the killer and chases after them with a shotgun. The group runs off, but Timmy decides that now is the best time to stay behind and record a monologue. He gets killed for his stupidity. Brent finds Timmy's camera, but he doesn't find Timmy? Who could have moved Timmy's body? Was the killer driving a forklift? They set up a bear trap but accidentally kill the sheriff. Pop tries to kill Brent, but Corey shoots him with the sheriff's gun. Okay, a bunch of your friends are dead and you just killed a cop. Break out the champagne, it's time to celebrate. Bonnie goes to call the cops and Corey goes with her. Corey returns and tells Brent to go check on Bonnie. Corey then tells Allison that Brent is really the killer. Corey gives Allison her gun and she shoots Brent. The police show up and Corey tells them that Allison's the killer. That's the director there in a cameo. The police cart off Allison and have no problem blaming her for the murders. Meanwhile, doesn't anyone find this suspicious? Not even a little bit? They aren't even going to bring her in for questioning? So basically, Corey killed everyone and set up Allison so she could be the head cheerleader. The movie was inspired by real events. The writers and the director heard about a girl in Northern California that killed a classmate who made the cheerleader squad and she didn't. The original title of the movie was Bloody Pom Poms. The distributor of the film was afraid that stations wouldn't carry the film because of the title, so they renamed it to Cheerleader Camp. The original trailers still say Bloody Pom Poms, though. The film was shot in 24 days. They had a very relaxed atmosphere on set, and every Saturday night the cast and crew had a party since they didn't shoot on Sundays. I think that helped the tone of the film because you can tell that everyone's having a really good time. The movie was filmed in Sequoia National Forest. They used cheerleaders from the local high school as extras at the camp. In the mascot dance-off, that's Lucinda showing the moves she learned from the break-in movies. They ran out of actors for the mascots, so in this scene, Leif Garrett is actually playing the chicken. It's amazing! I know you're not going to believe this, but the actors did all their own stunts. The fade to red they used throughout the movie was borrowed from the 1971 vampire film, Daughters of Darkness. The FX team bought a cow's bladder from a local butcher and filled it with fake blood. In the scene where Timmy gets killed, you can see the wire that pulls open the fake stomach. 
The director had a screening at the old MGM studios and the film was very well received. There was a really good buzz about it, so Atlantic Releasing bought the theatrical distribution rights. Unfortunately, Atlantic went bankrupt before the film was released, so they were only able to have a very small theatrical run. They started working on a sequel in 1990, but when Prism Studios backed out of the production, Paramax Studios took over and changed the film to Millennium Countdown. They later changed the name again to Camp Fear. While it does star Betsy Russell and has some of the same actors as Cheerleader Camp, it is sadly not the sequel. Pop was played by Buck Flower, who you may remember from Blood Games. He improvised many of his lines. Line of duty, pal. Line of duty. Line of duty, my ass. Line of dirty, more like it. A little hard to concentrate on my work with a place full of this gaggle of gum beers. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh, damn it, you can't sing. The first scene in the locker room and football field was actually the last thing they shot. They filmed this in Bakersfield High in Bakersfield, California. This was the only thing they shot outside of Sequoia National Forest. The punk band at the after party was producer Jeff Prettyman's son's band, Rigor Mortis. It was his son's interest in punk rock that influenced Prettyman into producing the legendary punk rock documentary, The Decline of Western Civilization. Pam was played by Playboy playmate Terry Weigel. She has the dubious honor of being the only playmate in history to move on to hardcore pornography. Betsy Russell had a nice resurgence in her career in the past few years, playing the ex-wife of the Jigsaw Killer in the awesome Saw franchise. She's almost 50 and looks fantastic. The FX people had already left when they were ready to do the arm slashing sequence. They only had enough makeup for one arm. They filmed the scene and then in post they flipped the negative to make it look like it was both arms being slashed. I don't know about you people, but if I don't take a break, I'm gonna flip out! 